Hey everyone, welcome to the KU Report in a company update from District Metals, chatting again with the president and CEO Garrett Ainsworth. We are going to be recapping a couple recent news releases, really recapping airborne survey results on two projects all in Sweden that are not the Viken project. That's the real, I think, flagship of the company. But now the company is showing, look at all the exploration potential on some of our other assets. So October 15th and October 29th, that's the news. Garrett, from high level overview here, look, airborne survey results, yes, they go about isolating usually fairly large areas for future drilling, but you do need to do a lot of work on the back end of that to actually isolate drill targets. Give us a, a broad overview of what you're seeing in these airborne surveys, please. Yeah, Corey, great to, great to be on with you. So the mineral licenses that we have in Sweden that are, you know, uranium or uranium polymetallic, you know, they have not seen any modern geophysical surveys on them since like the 1980s or 1970s. And so now we find ourselves applying like the latest and greatest technology, uh, one being you know, a drone radiometric magnetic survey at the Ardansvade property, and then uh, also using mobile MT at the Osterkallen property, which is part of the Alumshell properties. And, you know, it, it, the geophysical surveys have shown that they are working extremely well and really setting us up for helping to select priority drill targets. So Garrett, in terms of these large areas that these surveys have isolated, has there been any historic work, any past drilling? Have they been looked at before by past companies that have held these projects? Yes, they have. And that's, that's how we selected these mineral licenses was based on the fact that they contain historical mineral occurrences on them. So like Ardenas Vada has two different uranium occurrences, one being and then the other one being Labas. And, you know, Labas is a basement hosted occurrence that has had quite a bit of drilling as a historical mineral resource estimate. We now have determined it's got a very large uranium boulder field coming off of it where, you know, past glacier scraped off boulders with uranium and pushed it in the down ice direction. The Opsjok is um, also got a very large boulder field associated with it. But the thing that I'm really excited about with the Opsjok, especially given my background in the Athabasca Basin, looking for and discovering high grade uranium deposits, is that uh, the Opsjok within the Ardnansvada property is targeting unconformity uranium mineralization. So essentially, you've got a sandstone on top of basement rock, it's the same age as the rocks in the Athabasca Basin where they contact there's an unconformity there's a bunch of boulders with uranium from that unconformity that have been picked up from our our uav our drone radiometric survey and it was last looked at in the 1980s by the geological survey of sweden and where they ranked this as one of their top exploration targets for or their the top exploration target for uranium unconformity and it's never been drilled. They never actually got around to, to drilling it. So here we are looking at it and getting pretty excited. So Garrett, explain further some of the different types of mineralization. You and I have been talking a lot about the black shale type of deposits that you have at, I believe, the Viken project. But explain the different types of what you're seeing here and how that would change your exploration strategy, please. Definitely. Yeah. So yeah, obviously the alum shales or the black shales that are the host rock for the Viken property, Viken deposit, they're huge. They're very high tonnage, but they're lower grade. On our other three properties, Svada, Sokjarn, Nineforce, those do not have alum shales. So Arna Svada has basement hosted mineralization. So it's higher grade, but obviously lower tonnage. And then obviously there's unconformity style uranium mineralization in boulders at Vyopsjok, which again is very similar to the Athabasca Basin style of, of uranium mineralization. There are there have been boulders found in this district up to you know 28% uranium. And there's also unconformity deposits further to the east in Finland and also in, in Russia. There's also, you know, potential for sandstone hosted uranium as well. That's never been really looked at or, or tested for. 
Uh, and then our, our Nine Force and Sock Jarn properties are more of a intrusive related uh, uranium mineralization where pegmatites have intruded metasedimentary rocks. And, you know, where they contact the metasedimentary rocks, they've dropped out uranium and also created like a halo of like a magnetite, a weak magnetite halo. So they're, they're picked up somewhat, it seems, by a weak to moderate magnetic signature. So it's very diverse, the different styles of uranium mineralization that you find in Sweden, but we're well aware of all of them going forward. So what further work do you have to do? What further work can you do to build up some drill targets? And when could we see some potential drill plans or at least an idea of how you want to attack these other assets? Yes, definitely. So, I mean, we, we still have airborne geophysical data coming in. So before we, you know, pin down how much we're going to drill and where we're going to drill, we're going to need to bring it all in, have it totally you know, review everything in detail and that, that'll help us pick out what to prioritize. So we could definitely, you know, be looking to drill, you know, in 2026. I'm not exactly sure what the timing of that looks like. It's really going to be between, do we focus more on the alum shale targets or do we, do we focus on, on more the, the non-alum shale? But I mean, the priority will be the Vikan property you know, where we'll be planning to do a preliminary economic assessment within 2026. And then also, hopefully, we'll, we'll be looking at drilling some of those target A, A, B, G, H on the Vikan property as well. So Garrett, I ask you this time and time again, but even now building out these targets on these other assets, not the Vikan project, will you be bringing in partners? Do you foresee that as being the strategy for the company? because you hold a portfolio of these uranium and energy metal projects. So yeah, we're, we're the, the second largest landholder of mineral licenses in Sweden after Boliden. So we have a lot of perspective ground for all sorts of uranium polymetallic mineralization. And, you know, I think after the, the uranium moratorium is hopefully lifted, then we will definitely be open to partners to come and option some of our, our projects. So on that whole topic of the uranium moratorium, there's a vote coming up in Sweden. We should have finally some clarity on this whole issue that does seem to be moving in the direction of lifting that ban. But take us through when this vote is and what the outlook is here. Yes, it's taken a while, but we finally have a date and even even a bit of a rough timing in the day. So the proposal to be the proposal to lift the uranium moratorium in Sweden is set to be voted on in Swedish Parliament on November 5th. And the timing looks like it'll be about 5 p.m. Swedish time. So that, you know, in Vancouver time, that, that would peg us at eight o'clock in the morning. And what could come out of this vote? Just remind everybody what they're voting on. And if the vote goes in the direction, I, I assume you're hoping it does. What does that open up for the work that you can do at District Metals on your assets? Yeah, so the, the, gov the Swedish government has made a lot of moves over the last year, especially to lift the current ban on uranium exploration and mining. And so they've got a they've got this bill going to Parliament. They said they they've said many many times they have a majority to approve the bill. You know when when a proposal or bill makes its way to Swedish Parliament at this stage, you know statistically speaking, it gets approved ninety six percent of the time. So I like I like those odds, but you know it is politics. So you know definitely there can be surprises, and you know. If this proposal to lift the uranium ban gets approved, then essentially it um, it allows uranium to become a concession mineral or or metal on the mineral licenses, so that you can you can specifically explore for only uranium. And then there's also going to be changes to the environmental code, which allow for mining of uranium you know, whether it's as a primary metal or as a byproduct. So the changes to legislation, if the proposal gets approved on November 5th, then the changes to legislation will happen on January 1st, 2026. But uh, I don't see any risk, you know, once the uh, bill or proposal is approved on November 5th, 
there should be no risk that it won't, you know, it won't make its way into legislation for January 1st, 2026. All right, Gat, thanks for addressing these questions. Thanks for recapping that recent news. If anybody wants more information on the company or to read over those news releases, click that link in the show notes. That'll take you to the District Metals website. And please continue to send me any questions you have for Garrett to fleck at kereport.com. Garrett, thanks again for your time. And please keep me up to date on future news. Absolutely. Thanks very much, Corey.